Welcome to episode 85 of Uncovering the Corners of the World podcast. I'm your host, Karina Kasmala, using research and my personal experiences where I actually set foot in some of these places, I'll be describing some of the unknown attractions in both the US and around the world, as well as share some of the hidden landmarks of some well-known attractions. Returning with another thrilling adventure on this two-part episode is Colin Sugg. Besides being a good friend and traveler, he is the host of the podcast History from the Back Pages, where he reviews new and older films such as Dial M for Murder, The Wicker Man, and Blackberry. He's also the host of the podcast Chicago Soccer Talk with Colin, a sports podcast where he informs listeners of the latest Chicago Fire FC and Chicago Red Stars updates. Colin co-hosts the podcast The Bull and Hawks Sports Show with his friend Ben, where they discuss recent sports games as well as interview student athletes from various sports. Colin stops by to share his flight from Illinois to Costa Rica, where he toured the Starbucks coffee farm, picked up on some cultural differences between the U.S. and Costa Rica, and explored the capital of Costa Rica. How was it? Let's see. Uh, so it was fun. We left O'Hare, went to Atlanta, because there was no way to do a full flight. You had to lay over. It was fun. I planned it to be de-iced, because the weather in Chicago was getting bad. We left super early, so our flight was at 6, so we left for the airport like at 3.30, and I was glad we did because there was only one person in front of us in line of security, so the security was like one second. Yeah, so that was over here. We had like two, one person in front of us, so we went for security, had breakfast, boarded the flight, then we got to Atlanta, but since the plane had to be de-iced at O'Hare, it was delayed like 40 minutes, so when we arrived in Atlanta... We only had two minutes to get off the plane. But Delta was nice because they said that anyone of tight connection, which was a lot of people, could get off the plane immediately. So then I was like, I'm leaving. So then I told people to get out of the way politely. And then we got off the plane. And the gate was like one gate over. So we got on. We did not miss our flight. We were worried at first because we had printed out the tickets. But the Delta app had already given us a new flight. So if we had not tickets out i'm not sure what would have happened because they had given us a flight for the next day so saturday 11 30 was like the backup flight but luckily we did not have to take that so we got on it was like four hour flight made to costa rica and we arrived what's the time difference between costa rica and the united states so same as chicago but the only difference is that they don't observe daylight saving times like we do so Costa Rica was one hour behind Chicago when we were there. The main reason we went was that uh, Brian was part of this program called Starbucks Odyssey. It involves like NFTs, um, stamps, merchandising. And there was like five, lots of people in the United States who were part of the program. Top 20 won a trip to Costa Rica. And he was one of those people. So he got to invite a guest. So the 20 who won got to invite a guest. So there was 40 of us total. It was all expense paid, so that was great. It's a dream trip. It was. But it was fun because we got off the plane and there was people waiting for us with like huge signs. So like it said Starbucks, so like we knew immediately where to go. And then we waited a while, then we got on a bus and went to the hotel. How was the food? <laughs> so we stayed at a Marriott Hotel, Marriott Resort. The food was good. Uh, Costa Rica... They use, there's some differences compared to the United States. Overall, they use less sugar than we do. So classic drinks, for example, like coffee or ones that are made, you expect to be covered in sugar or not. Or like desserts, you might think would be full of sugar. They taste different. Hotel food was good. They had breakfast buffet every morning. And they changed it up a bit here and there. It was tasty. They had the classics, eggs, bacon, burritos. The fresh fruit was excellent. In Costa Rica, because they're known for bananas, pineapples. Those are the two fruits that they um, grow the best, that taste the best, the most fresh. Strawberries, too. Those three are the most fresh. The pineapples were very tasty. And the bananas, I only got to have one mini banana. It tasted very good. But that was the least successful fruit of the ones that were on the offer. It was a bummer, because I was like really hoping for the bananas. Because one of the two guides we had from the airport said that we were going to love the bananas. I only got like one, but it was good. The only thing about Costa Rica that's different 
Well, people in the United States love huge portions. But in Costa Rica, majority of the meals they order, especially are not buffet style, are huge. So, like, for example, Brian ordered a Caesar salad at, on Friday night when we arrived, like, for dinner. Mm-hmm. He thought it was an appetizer, but it was really, like, a huge entree. So the Caesar salad is, like, ginormous. Like, multiple strips of chicken breast and croutons and cheese and dressing is huge. Overall, the trip, my favorite meals would be I had a strip steak at the steakhouse on the hotel. A lot of people went joined us. There was a lot of us who were eating dinner at the steakhouse that night. We ate at a cafe at the hotel for lunch one of the days, and they had this excellent sandwich which had roast beef and then, like, avocado and then some cheese, and it was really good. And then had this, like, the sweet potato fries, so it was super tasty. There was only one that was weird. So we had a welcome dinner, and that was on Saturday. And there was 40 of us, so we ate, like, in the courtyard. And so, like, a huge multiple tables, like 40 people. Mm-hmm. The service was also excellent. All the people were very friendly were great. But it was done in a way where each course was brought out, like, one by one. So, like, beef tendon was brought out, then pork, then lamb, then, then octopus, like, all this stuff. So... By the time you got farther down, you were already full. Or you didn't want it. So then it was like, there's so many food. All very tasty. There's a lot of like courses. Did you actually have octopus? No. I didn't have the octopus or, or lamb. I don't eat lamb, and the octopus was too, looked too weird, so I skipped. Uh, so the first day after we got to the hotel and chilled on Friday, Saturday was the coffee farm. So we traveled about one hour from the hotel into the mountains. And the Starbucks coffee farm, a bit about it, it's the only one in the world for Starbucks. They make about 0.8% of all coffee in the world. There's two seasons in Costa Rica, dry and wet, and they're the best part of the season for the coffee beans to grow and be harvested and then roasted to make coffee. And there's a whole process into it. Like They have to make sure the beans are safe, High quality, first rate beans. If not, they're your fertilizer thrown away. I didn't get a good answer for that, but they're just not used for the coffee. And there's a whole long process too. It can take like six months or more for the beans to be ready. And they build tree like they uh, plant trees, like the coffee trees, and those can take a long time to be ready as well. And a lot of it's just waiting, preparing, growing, um, harvesting the beans, and then getting them prepared to roast. So they have three different roasts, blonde, medium, dark. And it's the same beans, but they're just roasted differently so they get the flavor and taste that you're looking for. How are they roasted differently? Like, is it a longer process or is it a different method of roasting? I think, I think part of it's method, but temp to affect temperature. Mm-hmm. We got to see, like, the roaster. Like, he put beans in the roaster and then he was on. And... He's talking about like, the differences, and we had a guide the whole time who was very good, and he talked all about the farm and about Starbucks. And- Did they explain why they get their coffee from Costa Rica? Uh, it's in one of the best climates. So climate is paramount, climate, season. So like, is it going to be a consistent climate throughout the year? And like, accessibility is key, pr- pricing. Like, is it a good location? And they, there's a few countries they mentioned that are biggest coffee producers in the whole world, and... They're in similar successes. So, for example, Brazil makes about 40% of all coffee. Vietnam, second, and then Ethiopia. And then, like, Costa Rica is down there. But those are places that produce a lot of coffee. They also have training centers, which is interesting, like, to improve the coffee growing and methods and new techniques, which is interesting. Uh, We also did coffee tasting at the farm. We got to try dark roast and a medium roast. And learned how to do the tasting. So you need to smell it. Like you have to smell the coffee and slurp it. So like smell and slurp, that's how you do you do it to taste the best. Is that the same way how you could tell the difference between a dark roast and a medium roast? I think so, because they talked about like how you can taste the different notes and different like flavors. Personally, the dark roast was the best. I actually bought some for my dad, because it was excellent. You can only get the coffee from there at the farm only. So the one that I got him can only be bought there. That's cool. It's really good dark roast. Normally I'm more medium, but I was like, no, this dark was awesome. So I bought it. 
they also have merchandise for sale there and you could buy drinks just like a normal Starbucks there that were a little different. Were there frappuccinos there or was it just coffee? Oh no, they had all cold brew, frappuccinos, lattes, all of the ones you would like. Is there anything that was specific just like this drink you could only buy in a Costa Rican Starbucks? Or did nothing seem out of the ordinary? No, I don't think there was any of the ordinary ones. Okay, I'm just curious. It's a different day. I went to regular Starbucks in Costa Rica, and it was the same menu as the United States. Well, I mean, the only difference was that they sold the coffee that could only be bought in Costa Rica at a regular Starbucks. Thank you, Colin, for joining me on this week's episode. And thank you to everyone for listening in on this week's episode. Be sure to check out his podcast, Chicago Soccer Talk with Colin, on YouTube and History from the Back Pages and the Bull and Hawk Sports Show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you find your podcasts. Be on the lookout for episode 86 to listen to other attractions Colin visited in Costa Rica. Have a great week.